<laughs> yeah, what up? Uh, the making of PMD2, man, this album's been crazy. I just wanted to give you a little um, behind the scenes look at what it was like to make this album, because at the end of the day for me, it is like, I feel like I make music for people who are going through the grind that I've gone through and, and you're seeing that as it happens. So I just wanna go through some of these cool clips with you. I film behind the scenes and uh, just talk with you through a little bit of the challenges that came up of what it took to make this all and um, and that. So let's jump right in. So, so the first thing is like writing this album. Um, when I was writing all these songs, it was almost always by myself at a park or in my home just with a beat. And when I started gaining popularity, I'm just so appreciative of everyone streaming the music. You know, it has been, uh, man, we had like 800 streams yesterday, like 200 listeners, and it's just been consistent. It was kind of crazy because I was gaining more streams and more momentum, but like, I still felt this huge pressure to write. Like right after I finished Pressure Makes Diamonds, I was like, okay, I need to start writing this album now. And so that's what I did for about 45 days. I wrote 30 some songs. Um, and then, you know, 23 of them made, um, made PMD2. But it was just a lot of time alone, figuring out what would be cool, what would look cool. And, um, you know, just be okay, I would say. If there's any advice I can give to anyone who's in a similar situation where you just gotta like put your head down, it's just like be okay being alone, um, be okay um, figuring out yourself, what you want, what you like. So that was the process of writing it, it was pretty good. So when it was time to record it, we had finished the Meant to Be music video and we were just about to film the Jump music video. And we filmed all the pieces like at, um, at Buena Sera, the Italian restaurant we went to, and you know, at, uh, at Boom Island Park where we filmed a lot of that. We had filmed all that and then I said, yo, we need to get an orange Porsche in it. There's no excuse to not get an orange Porsche GT3 in this video. And so I worked with my buddy Jake and he has an amazing uh, car club, one of the biggest in Southern California. And he helped me locate this Porsche GT3 and shout out to uh, Simba, the guy who owns it for, for helping get that. But, uh, but, but we, I flew out there and the plan was, I'm gonna record, I thought, you know, if I'm flying out to LA, let's do it dope. Let's record this whole album in LA. And I was only gonna be there for three nights two of which I had a hotel, and two, like the last two nights I just had studio time, and then I flew out the following morning. So during the Jump music video, when you see me in the Porsche and those scenes, I was literally, I had just recorded the entire 16 songs off of PMD2. I had just recorded when you saw those Jump music video scenes in the Porsche. That was literally hours before I got out of the studio from recording that, which is, which is crazy to me. And uh, I want to tell you something. We actually almost missed the music video shoot to finish Jump. Here's what happened. So we're in the studio. We get out of the studio and it's a gated area. And we leave at like 5 a.m. to make this, or we leave at like 6 a.m. to make this 6, 6.30 shoot time. And the gate is locked and there's a coded gate and we can't get out of this building and it's like 6 a.m. and there's no one there to help us get out. And we have this video shoot that we've already paid for in literally like, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And so we're tweaking. Like, bro, are we gonna miss this music video shoot right now? And we ended up waiting about 15 minutes and luckily I finessed hitting someone up from the, from the studio session I was gonna do the night, uh, the night that night hit him up I was like bro we got a music video shoot we gotta leave bro like we gotta get this code so he gets us the code we're able to leave and that was such a blessing to me because we were able to finish the music video and shoot the music video properly which was great um, and so that almost didn't happen though I mean we almost had some really difficult things um, going into that so it's good after that I was editing Jump, you know, I, I don't, I'm not really talked about this, but I edited the whole Jump music video and the Meant to Be music video. And, um, and so I started editing on Jump uh, and uh, do, using a software I never used before. I just literally spent a day and a half reading the manual and I edited it and it worked out. And I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do the VFX, like the twisting and falling, but we just jerry-rigged it together and it worked. And now it's gotten, you know, over 500,000 views. So, so blessed to see that. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about what goes into this stuff because it isn't all as straightforward as we as we want it to be so 
So look, so I came to Los Angeles this weekend um, with about 32 songs written, ready to record the next album. Um, but I did not expect to have it be completed in two days and two studio sessions, which is now what is happening. So if you're seeing this video, just know that um, it didn't take two days. It's taken years and I hope you enjoy it. It's a new chapter. PMD2, let's go. Now, um, after the Jump Music video, I filmed it. That night, I was in the studio again, off like three hours of sleep, mixing all of the songs I had just recorded on PMD2 the night before in LA. And uh, it was just me in the studio the night before, it was me and my buddy Jake. And, um, and we were in there and uh, I spent six hours mixing vocals, seven hours straight just mixing vocals. Choose a hell of a um, a lot of which didn't change throughout enti the entire PMD2 song, or the entire PMD2 album. A lot of the vocals weren't tweaked that much, um, and so I'm grateful for that, but there's a lot that goes into this. And I wasn't, I thought I was going to be done with it that night, and you know, here's some video clips from it, from that night, because I recorded it. I thought it was going to be done that night, it definitely wasn't. Definitely was not done that night, and I took pretty much three weeks after that to mix and master the entire album. All right, it is Saturday, October 13th, I think, something like that. Uh, no, it's definitely not October 13th, because my options would be expiring, that's how I know. Finishing the album tonight, I'm finishing the rest of the songs. The rest of the songs will be completed tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 2.48 a.m. Monday, October 11th, 2021, PMD2. Pretty sure this is going to be good to go. I'm going to do a car car test tomorrow on all these but uh i ran through them i ran through them tonight if you don't know this it can cost anywhere from five grand to 15 to, to 40 grand to properly mix and master a song which is just means make it sound good and i had mixed and mastered the entire pressure makes diamonds first album and i was like you know what the people need it. I know I can make myself sound icy. I know I can make these beats slap. And so with the help of a pretty few crucial plugins like uh, Ozone for mastering and, um, and like Fresh Air from Slate Digital, um, I was able to mix and master it, finish it, get the album cover all taken care of. I hit up a designer because I've been like on the gas with little margin of error for financially. So I hit up a designer. He ended up being a fan of mine. And that was the guy who designed Aaron F Design, who designed the PMD2 cover. So there was so many of these things that just like came together uh, over the course of the last month and a half to make this album and make all these songs. One of which that I want to uh, point out real fast is like the willingness of the producers who I've worked with. Um, Cody, Rio, um, man, Blasian, uh, Trill, um, a lot of these producers, man, they allowed me to make this album pretty much and i'm so grateful for that so i want to say thank you to all of them make sure you go listen to some of their beats because they're crazy um but i wouldn't have been able to make this album if it weren't for them so i mixed and master pmd2 there were hiccups in there like this classic pressure makes diamonds you know if there's anything that we can guarantee on this road to whatever you're facing there's a lot of unexpected things and pmd2 i feel like and pressure makes diamonds just as the series now unfolds is really just about, you know, pressing forward no matter what. So today I found out that the first single from PMD2 got released on Spotify somehow. So it's already got like 500 streams. I've been reaching out to them all day like, guys, you gotta take this down. Ah, you know, the whole thing. And, uh, and they still haven't. But, you know, I wanted to make this video and talk about it because this really is pressure makes diamonds unexpected things happening you just gotta roll with them but other than that pretty clean process made sure it's slapped in the car like this like i literally have to like go crazy on this mix and master because it has to bang in the car if it doesn't bang in the car then it does not pass my books you know 
Um, and then after that, we went and shot Minneapolis content. I linked up with someone from my high school who now does photography and videography. Dang, we're out here at MIA. Reese is out here, just pulled up to Mini real quick, but we're shooting content from for PMD, you know, PMD2. And Reese and I, I was like, oh man, we linked up in Minneapolis, got in the studio, got in front of uh, Minneapolis College of Art and Design, which I highly recommend you go to. That's a great place in the city. Did some shots there, did some shots in the studio, and then that's it. I started releasing singles and started releasing <clears throat> promos for all this. I mean, that was pretty much the entire thing. So um, that leads us to now filming here the uncut today um, with man. It, it, it's just been, I've been so grateful to have the team behind me right now looking at that, that I'm looking at right now who've been able to come in and film this um, and have been able to support what I'm doing because without content at the end of the day, without your face out there, it's never gonna happen. I wondered for years, how do I go viral? How do I pop off? Bro, how do I do, 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 do? And you know what it was? It was a month and a half. It was number one, seeing what worked and modeling it. And number two, just popping, just just going consistent on TikTok. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Being consistent on TikTok with little to no views for 45 days. And finally, after those days and people started commenting and saying, yo, what is this dude about? What is this? Is this a meme? Is this not a meme? You know, we kind of started to get that traction. So that led up to now. And here we are, just finished filming the uncut for PMD2. It's been a, it's been a, journey of moving forward no matter what happens and I just encourage you all if you have something that is deep in your gut that um, you want to bring out to the world and you're afraid of what people might think or whether you might fail what happens if I fail and they don't love me anymore so on and so forth um, I would just encourage you listen a great quote from Jim Carrey that I always go back to is like you can fail at what you love or you can fail at what you don't love and you have two choices. I mean, you might as well fail at what you love rather than fail at what you don't love. And Tony Robbins says, you know, ultimate success, or excuse me, ultimate failure is success without fulfillment. And if we don't have fulfillment in what we're doing, then all the money is for waste. And, um, you know, so you gotta be in it to love it. I'm grateful to be around a team that does. And um, PMD2, let's go.